Welcome back. Welcome to the fourth week of Advent. And as we find ourselves together in conversation today, let me just begin with words of gratitude. Thank you very much for the gift of being able to be with you in these four weeks. On behalf of uh, Sister Miriam and Father Josh and all of us here at Ascension, I uh, just want to say thank you for your trust and for inviting us into your hearts over the last three weeks in this sacred season of Advent. It's been a beautiful journey. It's been quite a pilgrimage for us this year. As we find ourselves together in this fourth week of Advent, perhaps a, um, a conversation today about how to best prepare for the gift of Christmas. And I would be remiss if we didn't start by just acknowledging the beauty of what God has done in our lives this Advent. So maybe just a few words of how we can celebrate um, what God has done in our lives this Advent. The first encouragement that I would offer to any of us is to, to look back on the meditations in the journal that uh, most spoke to you. If there were meditations where either uh, the text of the meditation really kind of touched your heart or the perhaps it was one of the scripture passages in the four-year prayer piece that uh, the Lord really blessed you with, uh, whether it is this week or perhaps even after Christmas, don't be afraid to return to those. Uh, at every moment in our life, we uh, are, we can't receive everything that God wants to bless us with, right? And so as we return to those either meditations or scripture passages, it's not like we're trying to repeat the prayer experience. We're just returning to see if God has anything else that he wants to give us. Imagine that our hearts are like the size of a, a, a glass of water, like a glass, right? And um, we're standing under Niagara Falls, right? That, that glass can't contain everything that God is pouring out in that moment. And so when we return to a meditation or to a scripture passage, it's, we're just going back with the water glass to see if the, the, the water's still flowing, you might say. And so the first encouragement I would offer you is just to return to either the meditations or scripture passages where the Lord spoke. There might have been, in the pilgrimage of Advent this year, meditations where perhaps you actually left with, with things unresolved. Maybe there were things that were in the text of the meditation or, or things that rose in your heart as you were watching the videos. And uh, it was some pretty personal things or some sensitive things. And, uh, and perhaps um, there was a part of a conversation with the Lord, but you just left with things unresolved. Don't be afraid to return to those. It happens to me all the time where it takes more than one conversation in order to have the conversation, <laughs> right? Our relationship with God is just like our relationship with people. How many times do you and I both know that in our human relationships, sometimes it takes more than one conversation to kind of get everything out in the open for us to hear the other person, for us to connect the dots and, and to come to resolution with an issue. Uh, most of my life has been a series of conversations that have led to breakthroughs rather than one particular moment. And perhaps um, God began something with you in this Advent season that might need to be revisited as you give him your heart all over again uh, every day for the rest of our lives. And finally, I would want to offer some encouragement. Uh, if there were ever days where all you heard was silence, uh, be not afraid. Um, most of my experience of God in prayer is often filled with silence. And this is what I've learned about silence in prayer. Oftentimes, silence is like a magnet, which brings to the surface things that I didn't know were even in my heart. Right, so stay with me. Let me give you an analogy. Let's imagine that my right hand is God and the silence. And my left hand is an issue that I was unaware of, and it's buried deep inside my heart. Sometimes what happens is in the silence, God intentionally refrains from saying words to us because what he wants to say to us is already in our heart, right? And so what happens is in the silence, now watch what happens to my left hand. The silence is like a magnet, and it brings to the surface things like, oh, I didn't even know that was there. She may have been praying with something, and as you were praying uh, over the course of these weeks of Advent, a theme popped up, uh, a desire of your heart. And as you were praying, uh, maybe you didn't know that you needed to trust the Lord more. Maybe you didn't know that there was a particular sin that was there. Sometimes God remains quiet intentionally so that whenever he does speak to us, 
where we're in conversation with him, you might say about the more personal things in our heart that were hidden from us. So be not afraid as you review your journal. If there were things where you just felt God was quiet, re return to those days also. And instead of um, looking at the expectations that weren't met, Maybe maybe see if you can recall or even look in your journal to see if there are, were emotions or questions or things that you said that maybe surprised you or that you didn't know were there. And that might be what God wants to talk to you about. And throughout the, the pilgrimage this year, we've had the privilege of celebrating not only uh, just our hearts with you, but you, you've been generous in sharing your hearts with us. And again, we say thank you. Uh, just the gift of being able to pray with you. Uh, in week one, we did some Lexio Divina. Week two, Sister Miriam led you in that guided meditation. Uh, last week, week three, Father Josh led you in the examination. And, and this week, with your permission, I'd like to teach you, if you haven't prayed with beauty visually before, I'd like to pray with you with beauty. Of course, we are in the fourth week of Advent, but... Uh, we know who we're, we're preparing for, right? It's important for us at this point of the Advent pilgrimage to keep the end in mind. So even though we're getting ready for the birth, it's, it's, it's very right for us to, to focus on the person who was given to us in the birth. And so as we pray, I just want to invite you to be with me. And as you, as you pay attention to the beauty here, pay attention to what's happening here, right? As you find yourself with your eyes drawn here, really like pay attention to what's happening here. This is the more important place where the Lord's going to meet us. So my, my friends, I, I, I invite you to pray with me today and let's ask the Lord to touch our hearts. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for just the beauty of uh, the season of Advent, this pilgrimage with the people, places, and events that have shaped our hearts so beautiful. We thank you for the places that we have journeyed in and what that revealed about our hearts and the people that we've met along the way who have taught us much. We thank you for the events that have disposed us to receiving you. We thank you for Mary and Joseph who await us in this fourth week of Advent. Holy Spirit, take our minds and our ears and our eyes, our lips, our hearts. Take all of our spiritual senses and, and help us to pray, for we know, do not know how to pray as we, as we are. And, and friends, I just invite you to just look at Mary holding Jesus. Pay attention to where you're drawn or Pay attention to where your eyes kind of want to stop. And pay attention to what's in your heart as you look at the beauty of Mary and Jesus. I'm drawn to, to Jesus first. I love his head, like he's safe. He's nestled in Mary's chest almost. Like his eyes are closed and he's just at peace. It's easy. He feels safe there. I love the tenderness of his hand. It's almost like caressing Mary's garments safe, free. And, and may, I, may I ask some of us if that's what we most long for this Christmas. 
is for some of us, what would it be like at this stage of our life if we felt safe, free, and at peace? And Mary, like I'm drawn to her, her head. You can almost feel like her skin, like it can feel like the, the texture of his hair rubbing up against her skin. Like as Mary breathes, she can feel Jesus breathing almost with her. Like you, you can almost feel the warmth on her. He's so at home with him. Where are you drawn? Pay attention right now to what's in your heart as you look, as you behold. Now, just for a moment, knowing that maybe for some of us, gosh, we just long just to be free and safe. And if that's where you are, then just stay right there and ask for the grace this Christmas just to feel as safe as Jesus does. However, for some of us, knowing that Mary is who she is and knowing that you are who you are, maybe just for a moment, let's ask the Holy Spirit for the grace for you to hold Jesus. Stay there as long as it takes. Be with him and let him reveal where you most need a savior. God bless you.